You're watching Moms Matter on EverTalk TV. I have Natasha from Dr. Organic Mommy back in the studio today to talk about getting rid of pacifiers, a huge dilemma that we all face. So I am so excited to hear about how we do this. I had four kids all with pacifiers. We right. struggled. It was so difficult to take away the pacifier. Yeah. So the question I have for you is if you have a child who has a pacifier mm -hmm. and you see that they cannot function without it, right. when do you kind of think the right time is to take it away? So pacifiers definitely help in terms of soothing the child, especially um, when they're little babies under six months. But around six months, I like to really have a boundary there. So only when they're sleeping or in car rides if they're having difficulty in the car. Okay. And that's where you can at least manage it, manage it and have that kind of restriction in place. And that way it sets you up for success later that you can easily remove it. Um, typically around six months, that's when people sleep train. Um, and so it's easier to remove that if you choose to go that route. Um, but it's a different story when they are older um, and it becomes more difficult. So Right. I mean, toddlers with pacifiers, they just love their passies. They want it in their mouth at all times. Right. And it's really a struggle. So when do you know that it's going to be detrimental versus a positive move to actually take it away and, ha and learn have them learn to self-soothe? Sure. Um, I think under two is... Everything under two is a little bit easier. When you are when you turn two, developmentally, you're just at a point where you want to have control over everything. And so you have control over your eating, your sleeping, your, your toilet habits, um, as well as your pacifier and what objects you choose to use to self-soothe. So I always like introducing a lovey, especially early on around six months. You can tie the little lovey in a knot, um, rub it on your neck so that they you know have mm. your scent. Um, and they can smell it, and so that way it's like kind of like a transitional object, so you can use that. But with a toddler, when you do remove it, you can either gold, go uh, cold turkey, so it really just depends on the child, or you can start to say it's only for sleeping, and if you really want to use your pacifier, you can go back to your crib. That means you're a little bit tired right now, and that's all, totally all right. And just so let them know and let them make that choice. So if they want to go back to their crib to take a nap, then that's fine. Nine times out of ten, I would say your child would say, no, I don't want to go nap right now. And say, all right, the pacifier stays there. You know? That's great. And just follow through with that. They want to take the pacifier out, they, they, they can't. They've got to stay in their crib and just let them you know, have their tantrum in the morning. When they say they want to take the pacifier out of bed, just makes it easier. In terms of removing it, there's a lot of different ways after two um, that conceptually can, they can understand it a little bit better. My favorite personal way, just because I do love to garden, um, is to bury the pacifier in the dirt mm -hmm. and then get a plant, make sure that your child doesn't see it. And then when they go to sleep, take the pacifier out of the ground, just in case they dig it up, and replace it with a plant um, that has bloomed. And you plant the pacifier and they say that it just bloomed into this nice flower or you know some kind of um, you know, a tomato plant or whatever you want to actually have grow. You can even just put it in a pot. And that way they can water it and take care of it and they really feel like their pacifier did something. So that's like the way of celebrating the getting rid of the pacifier. Yeah, that it's growing into something else. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. Instead of like saying like, oh, we're going to give it to another baby just in case you have another child in the house, they really want to take on that role as staying as a baby and so they, they can kind of regress. And so sometimes that can kind of backfire. Um, another one that I've done is to um, exchange it to with the like the UPS or FedEx guy. Uh, a lot of you know young kids really are obsessed with trucks, and so like telling them, oh, I'm going to give you my pacifiers, and they they delivered you a package, you know that you can have. Um, so it's kind of that exchange taking place. And so then the child has a better understanding of where their pacifiers are growing. Well, that makes sense. That's, those yeah. are great tips. Yeah. Now, what do you do with a kid who agrees to all that, and that's great, but then at night they are just Screams. screaming bloody murder because they can't go to bed without it? Say, so, yeah, I, I, and just sympathize. I know you were really used to that pass, your passy, and you really loved your passy. Um, but now we have a lovey, and your lovey is going to take your play, the place of the pacifier, and you can hold on to your lovey and make sure that it helps. And that's kind of what you got to deal with. It might take a week or two, up to three weeks, typically, with older kids of restless nights and, and you know, sleepless nights uh, where you really do have to calm your child down, but it will pay off in the future. So you just stick to it? You got to stick to it. It's all about consistency and follow through with kids. They really will want you to push, they want to push those boundaries, but in reality, they need boundaries. 
after, especially after the age of three, they really need boundaries because it makes them feel more secure, more stable. It makes them um, feel like they can trust you. All right, so those are great tips. Um, and restless nights are worth it at the end. So you yes. just stick through it. You stick through whatever you say you're going to do and you follow through. Yeah. Which is what the kids need. And you as a parent have to be ready. If you're going to pull the passy, you have to be ready too. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have your bottle of wine waiting at the counter. Exactly. You know, biting your nails while they cry bloody murder all night long. Right. Okay. But those are really great tips. Thank you. I had yeah. not heard those before. Great. Thanks for joining us again. Of course. We love having you on Moms Matter. Thank you. And I'm sure we'll have you back very soon. Be happy to. Thank you for joining us today on Moms Matter at EverTalk TV. You saw Dr. Natasha from Dr. Organic Mommy right here talking about how to get rid of your passy. So we'll hope to hear from her very soon again. Join us again next time.